Hi there, a uh, quick demonstration here of my latest Raspberry Pi hack. It is a project which identifies who is connected to the internet and uh, scans for various users to see when they're connected. This was born about from the idea that uh, there's lots of people in the house, there's lots of people using the internet, and basically somebody's always hogging it. Um, certain people's devices, certain um, users, uh, their phone or their device takes up more bandwidth for some reason or maybe it's what they're doing on it, downloading music or tagging their friends and uh, tends to take up a lot of the internet connection that's available and slows it down for everybody else. So I'm going to show you two things. Um, I'll show you the actual project in action and you can see it working and then we'll move over and have a look at the code and you can see some of the features uh, and how it was put together. All the code is available on my website or the GitHub repository if you want to have a go yourself. Um, and build your own version of this. So as you can see, the first thing we've got is the names of the different devices down here. Uh, and then we're using the Pimeroni Blinkit, and uh, this is eight LEDs. When it turns on, it will do a scan of the network and identify which devices are connected. Uh, these are pre-populated into a list, and it will look for these different, um, these different devices here. If the device is found, then the LED lights up, each device has an individual color which was chosen by the user and there is also an audio announcement which will tell the user, tell us that that person has come online and uh, is, is now obviously using some of, the, some of the internet connection. As a device leaves the network, again, the light will go out and um, there will be an audio announcement to let you know that that person now has left the network and is no longer using the internet. So let's start it up and, uh, and have a look at it in action. Okay, so we're just going to boot up the Raspberry Pi and uh, see this program working. I'm going to start the program running now and uh, you can sit in action. Here we go. Internet in online. Online. So it's found the Raspberry Pi and it's also found the internet connection. Currently, the, uh, those are the only two devices connected. Now, because it's already found those two devices, it doesn't repeat them a second time. Um, otherwise, what would happen is it looped around, you'd get an uh, audio warning or an audio update every minute saying that the Raspberry Pi was online or um, JST phone is online. Of course, we already know that information, so we don't need to repeat it again. Uh, if those devices go offline, then it will announce that they have actually disconnected. Uh, so now I'm going to connect the K laptop. And I'm just going to turn this on now. This is just currently booting up. Okay, so I'm just logging in now, and this is uh, connected to the to the network uh, because it's already done a scan. Um, we're in the middle of the scan, it should find it this time. And you can see there, uh, the green one's just turned itself on. K's laptop online. And we get an announcement that K's laptop is online. Uh, if I turn this off now, so I'm now turning off the, uh, uh, the laptop. That's off now. So the next time it's scanned, it should identify that that's now gone offline. Yeah, so the K laptop uh, LED has gone off and now we should get a uh, voice audio K laptop offline. warning saying that it's gone offline. Okay, the other one there is my phone, so I'm just going to uh, enable the Wi-Fi on the phone connection. Okay, so although I'm filming with, uh, filming with my phone, I've also managed to uh, get the Wi-Fi, so hopefully this time we should get the third one there. You can just see it in green. 
I'm just going online. And uh, now I'm online. So that's basically how it works. Um, it scans for the name of the device, so Internet Raspberry Pi, Dan's phone, Elizabeth's phone, instead of an IP address, as um, IP addresses can change, unless, you've, of course, you've set up a static one. Um, but on a, on a home network, I might end up with a dynamic uh, IP address. It could change each time. And therefore, uh, searching for the name of the device is probably more suitable. Although um, certain people in the household have cottoned on that if they change the name of the device, then they don't get found out that they're on the internet um, or that they're connected. Um, I was looking at using a MAC address, but again, I thought that might uh, end up in a bit of a privacy issue um, or, or security issue. So that's basically how it works um, in action. And uh, now I'll show you how the code works. And uh, as I said, you can download this and have a go yourself. And we can just talk through some of the features of the code. Uh, in case you were wondering what this was in the background, uh, this is a Christmas hack. Um, there's a relay, a uh, Raspberry Pi, and they're currently testing at the moment. But the idea is, is that uh, I can uh, control the Christmas lights with the Raspberry Pi. So look out for that one later on. Turn off. Turn off. Turn off. Turn off. So we've all gone offline. I think that's because I pulled the cable out the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> we should be back online now. Wait. Internet is online. Raspberry Pi online. Online. Okay, let's have a look at the code. So the first thing you need to do is to install um, the various dependencies, um, nmap, um, and then obviously the uh, Python nmap um, controls, and then uh, import these, uh, install InSpeak as well, and then in import the Blinkit library uh, from the Pimeroni website. Uh, this is all available on the um, on the GitHub. And then we need to import the various different elements, the set pixel, set brightness, and so on. Um, then we come down here and we've got some, um, uh, some dictionaries. And in the dictionaries, I've got the statements that are read out. So this is the dictionary for when you are online. And you can see here the internet is online, Raspberry Pi is online. These are the statements that are pulled and spoken out when the, the particular device is found. And then I've also got a second dictionary. And in this dictionary, we store the information um, or, or the audio statements for when the uh, when the device goes off. So what's happening is the code, uh, the program is looking up for the device. It's finding if the device is on or off. And then um, if device one is on, it obviously reads this out. And if device one is off, then it reads that out. Uh, then we come to the main body of the program. And this... Uh, this basically involves um, checking the uh, host. So here's the IP address, scans through the IP addresses available and returns the data that it finds. OK, uh, this is then stored into a variable called text. You then split this, um, the, the, the text down. Um, it's fairly, fairly chunky amount of text. And what we're looking for is a keyword called host name. Host name is the name of the particular device. So uh, Raspberry Pi, Dan's phone, Elizabeth's phone, and these will be unique to each of the, the devices you've got on the network. This little section here looks through and finds the word hostname and then finds the actual hostname afterwards. So you've got a marker um, or an indicator hostname which will allow you to find what the hostname is. And then these are um, stored into to a variable. And then what happens for each of the host names it finds, it does a number of things. So have a look at Boofer's iPhone. So what it does is it's looking for excess iPhone and if it finds that it obviously prints out to the screen that it's found it. Here we set the color for the pixel. So this is pixel number, uh, sorry this is um, LED number three on the Blinkit and here is the color and then if the device status for three, so if the fourth device found is zero then uh, it changes it to one otherwise it passes. And then what we have to do is um, if it's not found so in other words, if this device is turned off, then it sets the pixel to zero, which obviously means that um, the device isn't available on the network. Um, the status of the device will be one because it has been found. And then because it's not there anymore, it changes the device status to zero. And it does this for each of the uh, various devices and you can change these 
uh, depending on what you have on your your network. This is probably the most complicated bit to um, to, to create. This checks through each device and ch sees if there is a change in status. So at the very beginning of the code, you have um, you have a device status. So zero means that the device hasn't been found. So when the program begins, all the devices are set to zero. And uh, what this means is that the program knows that the device isn't there. And then what happens is as you scroll through and each program runs, it adds a one to the position. So for example, if it finds the uh, the bright box EE, the internet, then if it was a zero, which it was a zero because it was set at zero to begin with, then it updates the status to one. So what happens is, is that this value here changes to one. And then when the program looks through to find all the ones, all the devices that are turned on, it will find that first uh, first device. And this happens um, this happens in here. And what we're checking for here is a change in status. One of the issues originally was that as it looped through the program, it would find the device every minute. Therefore, it would announce the device every minute, and that got a bit uh, a bit tiresome and tedious. And uh, we, we didn't need that. All I need the program to do is to identify and notify me if a device is online or if a device has gone offline. And uh, this basically checks the status. Um, if it's a zero, then it means that the device is off, so it can check here. And uh, here, here, here it says the um, this is the code for triggering the audio. So we're using eSpeak. Uh, dictionary offline X, obviously X in this example is position zero. And it looks up in that dictionary at the top. Um, position zero, which is the internet. Now if it's gone off, it will say hub off. If it's come online the first time you start the program, it will say internet is online. And it does these for each of the devices until uh, it discovers them. Then we up the, update the device status with the new device status. So if we had two devices on, um, these two devices would now be registered as on. And then it goes through the same process again, loops round, and it tells you what um, uh, what devices are on or, or off. This little bit here is the Pulse program. This is pitched from um, the Pimeroni examples and uh, just adapted it slightly so that it scans uh, as it's scanning, sorry, it uh, pulses up and down a, a blue light across the blinker to look like it's scanning and doing something. And then finally, we have the program running at the bottom, uh, which, is, which is there. So I'll have a go. Um, obviously, as I said, more information on the uh, GitHub site. Um, download it. Obviously, change the names here to the devices uh, that you're searching for. So obviously it won't be Brightbox, um, it won't necessarily be Raspberry Pi. Put your own names in there and uh, and have fun. And if you um, need any help, hit me up. Um, I'm on uh, Twitter and uh, happy to help you out.